Father God, I pray that you would just enable us to have open hearts to hear from your Holy Spirit this morning. I just pray your anointing upon uh, Bob as he brings forth the word of God and also just anything that you would lay on his heart uh, personally for those here this morning that would encourage them, strengthen them, comfort them, uh, just to... Give us that strength in our faith this morning. Open our ears to hear. Open our eyes to truly see what you're doing among us and in us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we have live streaming here with Bob Laughlin. Hey, Bob. So good to be back. It, it's... And if you saw what I see here, it's like we're right in that room with you. It's amazing what technology has done, where we can be 22 miles away and feel like we're just right next to it, sitting in your new beautiful chairs that I did not see until this time. They look great. Um, you know, it's it's almost every day you get up and you if you look at the news at all, you, you you can't believe what you see. It's been one year since I've been with you uh, in this type of setting. I think I was here last July on the 10th of July. And it, it was not really good in the world then. And it's not any better now. I was just looking the other day on Friday afternoon. I don't know if you saw it or not. Woke up to look at, at the news. They, the social, somebody on social media said that they were going to give away a PlayStation at 3.30 in Union Square. And a thousand kids, teenagers, kids showed up. And it turned into a mob. 
and they started throwing uh, bottles and projectiles. The police were bleeding, kids were bleeding. It's a, it's a violent story that often happens uh, on the effects and the influence of social media. Happens all the time, unfortunately. It, it's We live in a world that uh, seems to not be embarrassed anymore. They seem not to care anymore. It, they seem to not have lost their morals. I just read an article today on a study from Barna that said 3,500 people a day leave churches in the United States. That's a lot of people. And that's a lot of churches. Uh, we live in a really destructive time and a time that we never thought we would see 50 years ago, they talked about it. But all of a sudden, 50 years later, we're here and we're experiencing it. Uh, thinking back to the days of Jesus, things were absolutely exactly the same. Uh, they looked a little differently. The administration of things were different. In the days of Jesus, the Roman Empire had a stranglehold on most of the countries of the world. Uh, there was an estimated 300 million people living in all the, the, the world. There's about 8 billion people that live in the world today. Uh, in their day, uh, homosexuality ruled and reigned. Uh, uh, murder, uh, incest, all kinds of problems that were going on in the home, especially um, in the world that, that, that the leadership was corrupt dictators in the world in that time. And that's the day that Jesus was born in uh, 2,000 years ago. And uh, things have not changed much. In those days, um, uh, the Romans, uh, they were in war after war after war. And there was a, they were spread thin and their, their soldiers were spread all over the world. And, uh, and then comes Jesus speaking words of, of truth in a world that was untruthful. And they killed him, murdered him, crucified him. And then the people that were left, the disciples, the apostles, God had spoken to them and told them that he was going to bless them with the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. And then they ended up in uh, outside of Jerusalem in an upper room. I just, for a short time this morning, I want to talk about the word suddenly. I thought about this years ago, and I shared a, a message about suddenlies. There are 40 times in the scripture that the Bible uh, uses the word suddenly. 30 times in the New Testament, 10 times, excuse me, 30 times in the Old Testament, 10 times in the New Testament, and five times specifically out of those 10 that were used in the book of Acts. And you get a great picture of a dark world, and then the apostles and those that that 120, which is just a little probably more than what you have in your church, maybe a little less, I'm not positive, but it's a group of people like yourselves that met and worshiped and sang and prayed in that upper, upper room on Pentecost Day, 50 days since Easter, since the Lord uh, was rose rose from the dead. They meet in this upper room, and the scripture says that they were praying yeah. and worshiping God. And those 120 people in this upper room, like yourself, uh, a, a group of people that comes together, like on a Sunday or a Wednesday or whenever you come together, you meet and prayerfully pray and believe that the Lord is going to touch you and your children, and your family, and the community that you live in. The fact is, is that uh, I, I want to deal with three occasions in the book of Acts where it says the word suddenly. Because we've all had those days where something happens on that day you wake up, you didn't expect it to happen. Something happens in your life that changes your life. That's what happened with these three accounts in the book of Acts, on the word suddenly. The, the world I just described to you was going on when those 120 people were up on the upper upper room in the book of Acts chapter 2, when it says, suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. 
And the scripture says that all of a sudden they started speaking in, in another language, speaking in tongues, and people were looking and there were tongues of fire on the heads of everyone that was in that room. And what happened was that if you read on in that scripture, there were people from all over the world that happened to be there in Jerusalem. And it was noised about that these people were speaking in their own language. So you've got 120 people speaking in different languages of people that were listening and they heard the 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 words of um of people uh praising god worshiping god talking about the great works of god in their own language and they had come from a long distance and they didn't expect that to happen the fact is is that when many people in the church including this church i believe have sometime found themselves with the Holy Spirit in their life, speaking in another language, sometimes praising God, you may not know exactly what you're saying, but God does. And, and he understands that people, the Bible talks, they at times will be groaning in the spirit of God in prayer. And that normally happens when something great is going to happen. I remember going a long time ago, probably 40 years ago, I was asked to go speak at a church, probably about two hours from where you are right now in Western Washington. Well, they asked me to come down on a Wednesday, which was sort of an unusual time to start a, a series of revival meetings. But I went on a Wednesday and the pastor told me the Sunday night before 12 people got filled with the Holy Spirit, spoken new tongues. So we knew something was going to happen. I walked in the door, I shared a word, and all of a sudden, people were falling on the floor, people were speaking in another language, they'd never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, people were getting healed, people being delivered, people, it was, it was like heaven on earth. It lasted five days. The pastor and myself, we would come away from the service, we were like kids with a new toy, we didn't know what to do next. We didn't understand everything was going on, except it happened. I saw it. I, I saw kids, adults, older, younger, people off the street. Somebody said somebody called the fire department because they saw fire on the roof of the, of the church. I didn't see it. I was told that. There were so many things that were happening. One person was laying on the ground. They were in hell, and they were in a heaven, heaven visions both ways. Other people that were... Um, I remember a, a, a couple that I had prophesied over, and I told this gal that she was going to have a ministry with children. Well, that was at the in the immediate time of talking and praying for her. But uh, in heaven, there was a lady on the ground who was having a vision as she was in heaven. And when she heard me say that about kids, the ministry of kids, and all of a sudden a gate opened up and all these kids came into heaven. And the, the fact is, is that so many things do happen when people are praying and believing and trusting God. And it, and it comes suddenly. Often people don't even expect it to happen that way, but it does. Sometimes people in hospitals, they find themselves there in death, death's door and all of a sudden somebody comes and prays for them and they're immediately healed. It happens all the time. I know a good friend of mine who was a prophet who went to who went to uh, who uh, went to heaven not too long ago, and he had told me that he had a vision of the last days before Christ would come, and he saw people on the street being healed. He saw people being filled with the Spirit. He saw people that you, it just was happening throughout the uh, the th throngs of people in the world all at one time. God was really moving. All of a sudden, he, he saw this in a vision, and I trust him. Believe me, I trust him with my life. He heard from God. And the fact is, is that um, what happened on the day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2, when suddenly the Holy Spirit came upon them, um, that happens today. Yeah. Uh, it wouldn't surprise me one bit, and I do believe it's in God's plan, for that to happen in your church. 
this church has been here a long time. I first came to the church 43 years ago. I think it's 45 years ago. I came with a student group and uh, ministered in the church. I didn't speak or anything like that. I was just in Bible college. But your church has been around a long time and will continue to be here as long as the Lord comes, until the Lord comes. The fact is, God got, has brought many people in your church. They've come and gone. Pastor's been here, I think, 28, 29 years. But many people have come and gone since that time. But it's what people go with. You only have people a short time sometimes. But the day or every moment you're there with the person next to you is what you give to them together. And it's what God uses you to touch them. And they go out in the world. I knew of a of a, of a pastor who um, he was sharing that he had uh, God had called him to Kansas City and he had uh, built a church. He was there four years. He built a church up to 400 people in that four years. It was a, a four square church. And he said that he, he, he was going up to the pulpit uh, one day and the Lord spoke to him as he's going up. He said, close the church and scatter the people. Well, he just four, took four years. He had a rented building. And uh, he says he came, he spoke that Sunday. He came the next Sunday and told the people, this is our last Sunday here. And I want you to go into Kansas City. I want you to take what you've learned. I'm not telling you that's what's going to happen with your life, but that's what happened with his life. And listening, and you better know that you've heard from God in something like that. And the fact is that God does speak to us. And he, he, and, he, and he speaks to us, not just through people like myself or Pastor Brad or other people in the congregation that may share the word of God. But the fact is he's speaking to you as a congregation. And the, and the key, I've always spoke this for years, I've shared this, the key to living in our last days is hearing God and obeying him. Even if it seems impossible, even if it seems so uh, strange and 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 we as Christians, people call us strange anyway. Uh, the Bible calls us aliens. Uh, we're not of this world. Yes, we're here, but our our citizenship's in heaven. We're here but a short time. God has given you something to do while you're here, and especially this church, because that's what I'm speaking to right now. God has called you as this church in Stevenson to affect your community on the other side of the river and on your side of the river. The fact is he's given you and he's anointed you and he's, the Holy Spirit has dealt with people in this congregation and the ones that are coming in the next service. God's got his hand on you. You're very special. I've always felt affiliated uh, with this congregation. I've come back for years and years through different pastors. I've had the opportunity and the privilege of being able to minister in, in whatever way that may be to people in this congregation. And that's what Acts 2 is about. He said that through the book of Joel and through the prophet of Joel, some 300, 400 years earlier, where he prophesied that there'll be a, a day at the last days, he said he would pour out his spirit upon all flesh. He said that, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy and your old men will dream dreams and your young men will see vision. And even on handmaidens, and on servants, I will pour out my spirit. And that's the day we live in. From Acts chapter 2, we found ourselves in, in the last days. 2,000 years later, we find ourselves in the year 2023, in the last days of the world. It sure seems like the Lord's coming quickly. I don't know if you feel that way, but I've felt that way for the last 40 years. And if every day I live, it feels much more that closer to the coming of Christ. But we, we, we're at this time, time in our life where the Lord has come upon the church, even of those 3,500 a day that are leaving the church, God is with them. He's called them. He's invested into them the words of the, of the scripture and the presence of the Holy Spirit in their life as he has done with you. The second suddenly that he talks about is Acts chapter 9 where we find Saul, who soon would be called Paul, who Saul persecuted the church. He was a man that wanted to take people to prison. 
He was a man who wanted to see and consented to people's death. But in chapter 9, God got a hold of him. Saul was going one way, and God wanted to turn him around. It's like the word repentance is going one way, and you repent, you find yourself going the other way towards God. That's what repentance is. But Saul was that kind of a man. He was a man that was going to write the bulk of uh, the New Testament. He was a man that God was going to anoint to see healings and see uh, uh, pastors rise up through his ministry and people come to know Christ. He was a man that needed to change in his life. And so on that day in, that he was going to get people to put into prison, he's on the road to Damascus. And all of a sudden, there's a light from heaven, the scripture says. And, and it, it blinded him. The scripture says in Acts chapter 9, as he was journeying, he came near Damascus and suddenly shined around about him a light from heaven. The scripture tells us that he was blinded, that he was led off by, by someone and someone else that God had given a vision to was supposed to go and pray for him that he would be healed and filled with the Holy Spirit, which happened. And then Paul's ministry really grew. I remember a friend of mine uh, who's a pastor in Open Bible. He told me that when he was in the service, before he was a Christian, he was in San Diego and he was in a bar drinking away. And all of a sudden, he, he told me, he says he hears a voice, an audible voice that said, I am, I am coming soon. And do you want me to find you here? He looked around and there's nobody there. And he knew it was a voice that, that was real. He And he, he, he left the bar immediately and took off and got saved, went into the ministry, went into Bible school, and he's got a doctorate and two master's degrees and he pastors an open Bible church. Yeah, he's a great man. It's amazing what, heck, what can happen suddenly when you least expect it. God can come, and God could come back today. The scripture says he will come as a thief in the night. People will be going about their business. They'll be sowing in the field and, and building and, and everything that in a normal life, and all of a sudden, he comes. And we're in heaven. Suddenly. In Acts chapter 16, the third suddenly that changed people's lives had to do with Paul again and Silas, two of them who were going into an area and preaching the gospel and praying for the sick and seeing miracles happen. And they came across a young lady who was a fortune teller. The scripture tells us that people were making money off of her telling fortunes. And and she would she would mock Paul and Silas, saying, "This, is, these men are from God. They're preaching the gospel and changing the world." And they were mocking. She was mocking them, and Paul got really frustrated, and he he got fed up and turned to the to the gal who had a demon who was telling fortunes, and he said, "In the name of Jesus, come out." Within the hour, the demon had left, and the girl, uh, the girl was completely delivered, and her, the people that were making money off of her fortune telling were mad, and they set it up so that they brought Paul and Silas, and they put him in, and they scourged him, so them uh, took whips and, and flogged them, and then put him in the prison, put shackles on him, and while they were in prison. This is what happened. And suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison for, were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's bands were loosed. And they were bound and all of a sudden the earthquake, everything was loose. They were free to do what they, and the prisoner, the head of the prison was scared to death. People, the prisoners, they were all loose. They were afraid the prisoner or the head of the prison, the scripture says, 
he was going to commit suicide by his sword. He was afraid that his his masters would find out why all these prisoners were loose. But the fact is, is that things happen suddenly. Deliverance happens su suddenly. There are so many people bound in our country, people on the street, family members, kids. They're bound with uh, drugs. Last year, 100,000 people died of fentanyl. I mean, people that are, I mean, kids, adults, bound with this idea of drugs. Uh, it doesn't have to be that. It could be pornography. It can be what people watch, what people hear. Uh, it can be homosexuality. Uh, it It is prevalent. In the days of the Romans, where the Roman Empire, that the days that Paul and Silas were living, um, wars were all over the place, and homosexuality was rampant. And it's so it's it's much like what's happened in our world and our society. And I remember someone I I care about deeply said that uh, about homosexuality that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. The fact is is that God loves people. He's created them. He's created you. He's created everybody. Some people go one direction. Some people go another direction. Our society has been so brainwashed that, that if you know anything, and some of you have read maybe part of the book that I dealt with, with deception. And, and part of deception, there are 10 principles of deception, but they got there because of being brainwashed. Uh, social media, our TV, uh, the society, our school system, our government system have brainwashed people spiritually, where they believe that things, uh, they believe people are born that way, they believe, believe people just live that way, that's just the way it is, instead of really coming to the place and finding out the truth. And they have, they have so uh, brainwashed people and the truth out of them. Uh, the person, my friend that I wrote this book with uh, about deception, uh, we converse from time to time. He lived in a different state. And he said, you know, he says, one of the biggest problems that we've got, the biggest problem that we have in America is that people don't know what the truth is anymore. The fact is, is that Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20 says that there'll be a day. He says, woe unto those that call evil good and good evil. That call uh, um, darkness light and light dark. And the fact is that we've come to that place in our life that he has called you as believers to hold on to the truth, to hold on to what your pastor, I, I've heard pastors speak on the net. And your, your pastor speaks truth. To listen to what he's got to say, know that what God is saying to you, obey what God is telling you to do, and you'll find yourself in a place that is dark around you, but in, he says, greater is he that's within you that's within the world. Mm -hmm. That God has called you as a congregation, and I know he loves you, and I know his hands on your life. So hold on to the truth, because the truth will win out, of the, and this truth will set you free. The truth's going to set the world free. There's a day coming when everybody in the world, eight point some billion people, will have to bow down to the Lord Jesus Christ and say that, Lord, you are Lord, you are Lord. It doesn't mean they're all going to get to heaven. They'll just know that God, that Jesus is the Lord of all. So I, I say that, and I say this to you, God works suddenly. The thing about suddenly is they have three, two things in common. They're all bring miracles. And the fact is they're all life-changing. The, those 112 or 120 people that were filled with the Holy Spirit changed their lives forever. Uh, for Paul, it changed his life forever. For those, those prisoners that were set free, all of a sudden there's an earthquake and everything, they're free from those things. Well, they were free and it changed their life forever. Prayerfully, through people coming to know Jesus Christ in our day, 
that they will be changed for like forever and for their life will be forever, ever, never, ever be the same. They'll be following Jesus the rest of their life. So I ask you this today, uh, a question that probably that you've heard many times. Maybe you're in this room and maybe this is, there's some bands around your life that are holding, holding you back. It doesn't mean you're not a Christian. It just means there are things that are so affecting us in our society that things that we would never have thought about 10 years ago or 50 years ago, whatever, but all of a sudden we find ourselves in, we're involved with it. We think it's it, it's okay. God's going to forgive us, but we keep on going back to it. And they become ba bands that sort of hold us, hold us back from really coming to the place where we need to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, we were talking this morning that I was just reading that on the average, um, there are 3,500 people leaving churches every day in the United States. That's a lot of people. And uh, there's all kinds of reasons for it. Pandemic didn't help much. A uh, number of people have not gone back doesn't necessarily mean that people weren't Christians because they left. Uh, they've just going a different direction with the administration of their relationship with the Lord. Uh, this morning, I want to talk about uh, the Bible talks about suddenly something that happens immediately and unexpectedly. There are 40 times the Bible describes something happening suddenly. Uh, 30 times in the Old Testament, 10 times in the New Testament. But I want to deal with the five, actually three of them that happened in the book of Acts, uh, where something happened to somebody suddenly, quickly, unexpectedly. Uh, all, of the, all of the ones described have three things in common. Uh, excuse me, two things in common. They were miraculous and they were life-changing. And, and I want to deal with Acts chapter 2, uh, which is the first suddenly in, in the book of Acts. Uh, our world has gone upside down. Uh, the Bible talks about the be a day in the future, Isaiah 5.20, that says that woe unto those that call evil good and good evil. We, we've hit those days. Every every time I wake up in the morning, I, if I look at the news, you'll see things that you didn't think were going to happen. All of a sudden, they do, and uh, they're uh, they're heartbreaking, and they're difficult times that we live in. Uh, days that uh, the enemy seems to have uh, taken hold of our government, our educational system, our churches, and a lot of the churches, not all. A lot of the churches, a lot of hard times that they've gone through. Um, the one thing I wanted to talk about a little bit about Acts chapter 2 was the condition of the world in the days of Jesus compared to what is really going on now. It's just that in the days of Jesus, there were about, they estimate about 300 million people on the earth. Now there's over 8, 8 billion people. I mean, there's a, there's a difference. The same things happen. In the Roman Empire was in in charge, and they had a had their hands on everything that was going on in the world. They had armies going all kinds of places in the world, uh, fighting, controlling, taking care of people. Murders were commonplace. Uh, difficulty in marriages in those days. Divorce rate was high. Homosexuality was rampant throughout the Russian. Uh, excuse me. The the empire, the Romans. In fact, in Romans 1, you'll get an idea of why God spoke through Paul to the Roman church when it talks in Romans 1 so much about people that were involved in homosexuality, had the effects of the church and the effects of people in the, in the community. The fact is, is that uh, the world was in the Roman empire in those days. Uh, the average person I read the average person died at 35 years old in the days of Jesus uh, because of wars, because of disease. Yes, there were examples, I mean, exceptions to that rule. There were some people that lived older, 
some people younger, um, but on an average, uh, 35 years is uh, pretty interesting. Uh, that was the world that the people lived in in the days of Christ and the apostles. What happened was is that God told them, through the, uh, and they were looking through this, the book of Joel, uh, 350 to 400 years before Christ, some scholars believe that he wrote uh, concerning the last days. He said in the last days, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. He said, your sons and your daughters will pro prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And upon your handmaidens and your servants, I will pour out my spirit. Well, Peter talked about that after this event in Acts chapter 2. 120 people were in an upper room right outside of Jerusalem. And uh, they were praying. They were seeking God. And all of a sudden, the scripture says in Acts 2, and suddenly there came a sound, a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. The Spirit of God, uh, the Holy Spirit of God had fallen upon these 120 people because he was pouring out on the church because those guys would go out. These men, women, and children would go out and they would witness into the world about, the, about Jesus, his death on the cross, and that they needed the Lord and in the midst of a very dark world. And the fact is, is that um, it happened so quickly and then it took off and they spoke in tongues as the Spirit of God gave them utterance. People in the room were looking and there were cloves of tongues that were over every individual on fire as, as if to display the presence of God upon the church, upon church, churches like yours. Uh, even though we may be 2,000 years from the writing of this, this event, it is very much real as people are being still filled with the Holy Spirit. I remember from my situation, I was raised a Catholic in Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, my sister was in the convent. Uh, we went to church all the time. Um, it didn't mean that we were Christians, not in in the sense of knowing Jesus Christ as my Savior. Uh, you could say Christians in name. But what happened to me is that I went to the Air Force during Vietnam and uh, ended up in a place where God started to speak to me. And uh, some guys gave me a Bible and I started reading about Revelation and, and it just hit me in the heart. I came back... Um, uh, to uh, Washington State. I was in my barracks room January 12th, 1974. I gave my heart to the Lord, wept through a lot of my past, and and I uh, was on my knees and prayed and, and cried and cried and cried. Well, eight months later, I was out of the service, and I was in Cincinnati, and I was going to the Assembly of God Church. And the president of Moody Bible Institute happened to be there speaking. And if you know anything about Moody, Moody's a good school, um, not necessarily known for a Pentecostal experience, uh, but uh, he had talked about how he had been filled with the Holy Spirit. And probably 100 people, and I was one of them, went up to be prayed for. And as I started to pray, it just flowed like a river. I was speaking in an unknown tongue that I didn't know. And uh, it a voice behind me said, pray in this language every day. I didn't know if it's human or if it's from God. All I know is I walked out of that place into a new person. I was a Christian. I had the Holy Spirit in my life guiding me into all truths and righteousness. But that experience opened the door for me uh, for a, a new intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then from there, it wasn't long after that that I... Uh, I worked a little bit and then entered into the ministry or into Bible college and went into ministry from there. Uh, I'll tell you, God has a way of where you don't expect him. You're going about your life in a different way. And all of a sudden, he comes upon your life. 
and he fills your life up with his spirit and he starts to speak to you where you start to hear him. You start to hear it. And, and the difference between my life when I was a Christian, but I wasn't filled with the Holy Spirit yet, baptized in the Holy Spirit. It was like living in black and white. And when I became filled with God's power, it was like living color. It was night and day. It was suddenly, it was immediately, and it was, I didn't expect it, but I'm sure glad it happened. The fact is, is that what happened with those 120, they experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in their life. People were in Jerusalem that day, and they started, they were from all over, for, for whatever the reason, they had for all over the world in that day. They figured there was probably between 40 and 80 somewhere countries that were around in the world in that day. But for some reason, the, the scripture says people from all over the world were in Jerusalem that time, and they heard these 120 speaking in their own language. I've seen some unique things about people speaking in tongues. Uh, I had one of my teachers, Bible college, was uh, the first missionary that opened Bible, which was part of this church, part of my life, uh, credentialed with them. Uh, and she was the first missionary that went to Liberia, West Africa for open Bible. And she, she went back in the bush. Of course, they spoke another language. And uh, she was in a prayer meeting. She said, you know, she says, we, we gather around in a prayer group and they were praying in their native language. And I was praying in English. And somebody was baptized in the Holy Spirit in that group. And their prayer language was King's English speaking the words of God in English uh, that he, he had no clue what it meant, but it was giving praise to God in another language. Um, some people become afraid of it, but it's nothing to be afraid of. It's God's coming upon your life. And I sense that God's going to do that in this church. More and more people, all of a sudden, I've heard of people driving their cars, all of a sudden start to speak in another language as God speaks to them. I was in a, I spoke at a church in Idaho one time, the pastor told me, he says, I was up in the altar doing some altar work with people that were, I was just praying for people, people at the altar, and somebody's two-year-old child came up speaking in tongues, and they couldn't even speak in English. They had a hard time praying words, even as a two-year-old, but they could speak in tongues. I mean, it's, it's an unusual thing, uh, but it's God's hand on a congregation, on individuals, that he's going to bless them. He's going to watch over them. He's going to give them direction on what he wants in that community. There may only be 100 people here or 200 people here in your church, but there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people out there that God's going to draw into this area. And it's there are some people leaving but there's also people coming and he's just preparing your church for it. So if you see strangers sitting next to you in those br brand new seats you've got, you may find that you might not have enough seats to, to cover it all. So don't be afraid of people coming, God sending them to you. And the second thing I wanted to talk about in the book of Acts and chapter nine had to do with Saul, who's would his name would be changed to Paul, who would, who would turn away, turn around from a guy who put people in prison for their faith until they became a Christian, a born again Christian, spirit filled, uh, and would write a big bulk of the New Testament, which Paul did. And he was on his way to Damascus, and he was going to put people in prison for their faith. Acts chapter 9, verse 3 says, and, he was, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. God, whether he was on a horse or whether he was walking, put him to the ground. He couldn't see. He was blinded. The Lord later anointed somebody to go pray for him, to pray for that he'd be healed. And then he would be filled with the Holy Spirit, and that happened. 
I was telling this morning about a friend of mine who's an open Bible pastor who years and years and years ago, he was in the service and he was in San Diego and it was in a bar and he was drinking up and he, and all of a sudden he hears an audible voice that said, uh, I'm coming, I'm coming quickly. And do you want me to find you here? And he turns around, there's nobody behind him. He, he sort of figures out that God was speaking to him. He went out the door, became a Christian, went to Bible college. He's got, he's got a doctorate and two um, master's degrees, pastors in open Bible. And he goes overseas as a missionary, great man. But it's amazing what God can do in a very quick time. God can change people can minister to them, can take them out of a place or set them in a place. You just never know what God's going to do, as he did with Paul. In Acts chapter 16, I'd like to share the third thing of suddenly. There was a woman, a young damsel, as the scripture says, uh, that was a, a soothsayer, a fortune teller, and uh, in the days that Paul and Silas were ministering the gospel, healing the sick, praying for people. And this gal mocked them, said these two were servants of the, the, the Most High God. They're preaching the gospel. And they, in her words, uh, it sounded like very a, mock, a mocking of Paul. And Paul got fed up and... Uh, he looked at the at the woman and because she was possessed of a devil. And he said, in the name of Jesus, come out of her. Within the hour, she was completely whole. And uh, the people that had her in uh, under control was making money off her telling fortunes. Well, they got mad because now their, their uh, source of finance had been taken from them. And so they got mad at Paul and Silas, and they they had him flogged, had him put in irons and chains in a prison. Well, the scripture comes in chapter 16, verse 26, it said, 26 says, and suddenly there was a great earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were open, and everyone's bands were loose. And we find out later, if you read on the portion of scripture, that the head of the prison was so scared because he was afraid that his commanders would come and find out that all the prisoners had been let loose. He was going to commit suicide. And Paul and Silas kept him from doing that and uh, talked with them and, and talked with people about the gospel of Jesus. And many people's lives were changed. But the fact is, is that as I read through that, and maybe you've read that scripture, uh, there were bands on the prisoner's feet. And how many people have had different kinds of bands around their ankles? Sometimes pornography, sometimes it's homosexuality, sometimes it's drugs, uh, sometimes it's fentanyl in our country, uh, which is all too common, people dying. Sometimes it's suicide. Sometimes it's uh, uh, people that are murdered in their neighborhood. I mean, there's a lot of things that people get caught up with. It's what they hear sometimes. It's the music they hear. It's the, what they watch sometimes on TV. I'm not saying all oh, TV is bad. Not all of it is. There are some that people get so enthralled that they be, it becomes a bondage uh, to them. And they have like bands around uh, their walking in this world. And uh, the Lord is, uh, the, the Lord tells us that sometimes it takes an earthquake, something uh, from God to really relieve people of the things they're bound with. The Holy Spirit does that. I have seen people immediately uh, delivered of, of different kinds of things, whether it's drugs or, or alcohol or all kinds of things that might hold up or bind them. The fact is, is that uh, knowing Christ is great freedom. It's right. It's great. Um, it's 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 such a freedom that it, it allows people to hear from God. 
not just to hear about him, but to hear from him personally. And I believe that's what God wants to do. He wants to take anything that's holding us back and he wants to deliver us from those bands that are holding us back from the Lord. Um, and I just, you know, I, I, I believe everybody or most people are Christians. If not all, I don't know who's all here today, but if you bow your heads, I have a chance to, to pray a prayer, I guess, for people that may be bound in something. They just can't get out of it. They keep going back to it. It may not be as, as bold as drugs or pornography or something like that. It might just be something that uh, they watch on TV. They just can't get out. It's just a bondage. And Father, we pray that you'd be with everyone in this room as they're seeking you, as they're looking for the Holy Spirit in their life, as they're looking for the delivering power of Jesus. And God, we pray that if there be somebody in the room in this church building that just needs your help, no, they cannot do it for, on their own. They need your help for deliverance. We pray that, God, that the bonds and the bands, the shackles would be taken away, that, God, they would be free, whom you said would be free indeed, that the Lord would change and deliver people and set them free. And, God, we pray for everyone in this room. God, we pray that you administer their needs. And God, we pray that the Spirit of God would touch them. Lord, if they're not filled with your Spirit, if they're not touched by, by the Holy Spirit, that God, your, your Spirit would come upon them and watch over them and minister to them. And God, we just ask you to be with them in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Everybody.
you're a friend forever.